Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to learn about inclined planes and how to use Newton's second law of motion to solve for various problems. Alright, so copy this problem down on your paper, uh, pause the video. An object of mass 10 kg is on a 30 degree incline and we want to determine three other things. A net force equation for the x and y axis, acceleration along the x and y axis, and the value for the normal force. Let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is to draw the free body diagram. Okay. Um, we have the normal force going perpendicular to the surface of the ramp, and we have the weight, also known as the force of gravity, or mg, going straight down. Now, after you do that, we need to create a x and y coordinate system. Um, the reason why we do this is to simplify the math. Okay. So as you can see here, I made the x-axis along the surface of the ramp, and the y-axis will be perpendicular to the x-axis, all right, just like that. Now we have to use some trigonometry. Whatever the angle of the ramp is right here, it's the same angle that you will create when you create the coordinate system right here. So for this example, if this is 30 degrees, this angle right here that is created between the force of gravity or weight vector is the same angle that you'll create right here. All right. So we're going to create two components. We're going to create the y component that I'm going to have in blue and we are going to uh, label that as mg cosine theta. Now normally when we use the, the y-axis, we're used to using sine of theta. However, this time around, we have to look at the angle, which is right here, and that angle is um, adjacent, or the side is adjacent to that angle, therefore we have to use cosine. Okay? Uh, the red component right there is the x-axis, and for the x-axis, we normally use cosine. However, this time around, we have to use sine because the red side is opposite of the angle. That will be mg sine theta. And the reason why we put mg out in the front is because uh, that is the hypotenuse for the triangle that we just created. Okay. Now, we're going to use Newton's second law for both the x and y direction. As a refresher, Newton's second law is um, the net force is equal to the masses times the acceleration. Uh, so for the net force along the x-axis, we have to take a look at all of the forces that are along the x-axis. Okay, So we have um, F is equal to MA, Okay, that's Newton's second law, and we take a look at which force is represented. And the only force that we see is this virtual component right here, which is mg sine theta. Now, I made it negative um, because it's going towards the left. You can make it positive if you want, but for me, my general rule of thumb is if it's going to the left, it's negative. Okay? Um, the force and acceleration, the x direction, I have a negative sign because it's pointing in the negative direction. All right. So we have a, another... Um, net force equation here, but this is for the y-axis, so we have f equals ma, okay, and we just made it for the y-axis, so we had the y subscripts, and we take a look at all of the forces heading in the y direction, and we have positive normal force right there, and we have the negative mg cosine theta. Once again, I made it negative because I'm assuming anything going down is going to be negative. Um, and here's a little interesting feature right there. I made all of this equal to zero. And the reason for that is because this object is sliding down the ramp, or it's going down the x-axis, and it's not going up and down along the y-axis. So we know that this object is not accelerating in the y-axis. If it's not accelerating the y-axis, then there's no force. All right, so we have the net force along the x and y axis. Those are equations, simple enough. In order to determine the acceleration along the x axis, you have to start off with your net force equation. Okay. Um, from there, 
I just replaced F with MA because F is equal to MA. Um, and then I divided both sides by the mass because I want the acceleration variable by itself. Now once I do that, uh, the masses on both sides of the equation cancel out and we get that our acceleration is equal to negative g sine of theta. Okay, um, And at that point, uh, I suggest that you plug in your variables at the very at the very end. Okay, And then put it in a calculator and you should get negative 4.899 meters per second squared. Don't forget your units. Alright, acceleration along the y-axis once again, start off with your net force equation, okay? Um, and we know that it's not moving up or down, or it's not accelerating up or down, so the net force will all equal zero. Therefore, uh, we can replace F with MA, divide both sides by M, and then we get A sub Y is equal to zero. Simple enough. Now this should make sense because, like I've been saying, the object doesn't accelerate up or down down the y-axis. All right, now to calculate the normal force, okay, we're going to start off with the, we're going to start off with the net force equation, okay, Fy is equal to Fn minus mg cosine theta. Now we know that Fy is equal to zero, um, and then we plug in zero for Fy, subtract both, and we have F n minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero. I'm going to move the normal force to the left hand side. At that point we have negative normal force is equal to negative mg cosine theta. Take out the negative for both sides and we get the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. And of course at that point all you have to do is plug in the values and then you get your normal force. So that's it ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching.